Thank you very much for the for the introduction. It's a it's a great pleasure to present uh, in this uh, conference that I attended uh, some years ago and uh, have good memories of it. And um, the, the the aim of the of the talk is is to give uh, quite a general view of uh, something that I am uh, particularly interested in, and, and is uh, this idea of uh, musicality and uh, the idea of how can we, um, from different disciplines, of course, especially from the areas of computational musicology that I am uh, particularly involved, how can we uh, promote that and, and help uh, people to really uh, improve uh, their musicality. So um, I will, uh, well, first have a, a short introduction on, 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 on discussing what I, uh, I consider the term musicality. I will then um, talk very briefly about uh, a large project that uh, I coordinated, Con Music, and, and, and also the, the idea that basically these, uh, these ideas that I will be presented come from that. And then I will um, focus on three uh, perspectives uh, related uh, to musicality and uh, from a music cognition point of view, from a computational musicology point of view, and finally from a music education point of view. And I will end with uh, some uh, final thoughts and uh, if you have any questions, then we can uh, uh, continue a little bit the discussion. Okay, so first, um, well, I assume everyone uh, uh, has a, an understanding what do we mean by musicality. Uh, the definition that you can find in, uh, in Wikipedia, uh, the, the first phrase uh, says uh, this, that uh, is the, the sensitivity to the knowledge of or talent for music. So therefore, uh, uh, a person is considered musical uh, by having the ability to perceive uh, and the differences in aspects of music, including pitch, rhythm, harmony. And at least uh, we, can, uh, we can think of two types of musicality. The, the one that uh, relates more with the perception of music, uh, so the idea that would be musical receptivity, and uh, the musicality that refers more to the ability of making music, uh, the musical creativity aspect. Typically, we normally uh, focus on the second aspect, on the, on, the, on the making music aspect and, uh, and learn how to be a musician. But um, one of the main points if, in this talk is to try to focus on the first one, on the mus musicality needed uh, to be able to appreciate music and that uh, typically is not uh, focused too much on. Okay. Um, then let me just uh, just mention this uh, project called Music. This was a, a large uh, European funded project that uh, that I started in uh, around 2011, 2012, and uh, it has been going on. But uh, well, the main part uh, finished. In which, uh, in fact, I involved quite a number of uh, researchers from from India. And it was a, an amazing experience in which we tried to um, develop uh, what uh, the field of MIR, so music information uh, retrieval type of technologies, specific for uh, music traditions that had not been paid much attention to in the field of MIR. And um, two of them was uh, Carnatic and uh, Hindustani music, and uh, we worked on uh, Turkish Makam music, on uh, Beijing opera, uh, and um, also we work on um, an Arab Andalusian music. But anyway, the, the, the idea of that project was to uh, take a, a very uh, engineering approach uh, coming from the information retrieval uh, field in which uh, from um, collections of data that uh, we had to put together and we made a big effort in collecting uh, recordings and metadata of, uh, of that. Uh, we, uh, we use uh, the traditional methodologies that are commonly used in the field of MIR, which are signal processing, machine learning, semantic analysis. And we try to uh, analyze music and try to um, 
make sense of uh, some of the basic uh, building blocks uh, that uh, these different music traditions had uh, related to melody uh, with the rhythm or with the semantic relationship. The whole, always the, the aim of this project was to be able to develop uh, tools that could be of use to, uh, to musicians and to uh, people familiar with these music traditions and that we could help them enhance their uh, understanding. But anyway, uh, the main focus of that uh, and uh, that basically finish and, and we are now continuing doing other things and, uh, and trying to extend that. And one of the, of the major conclusions is that, well, that's definitely a difficult task. And, um, and it's um, even though you can develop technologies to analyze the music, it's not so easy to develop technologies to help someone that uh, might not be familiar with that music tradition to uh, um, help understand the music. And in fact, is um, the current situation uh, from a technological point of view and from services point of view of how we listen to music um, is pretty bad. Uh, and uh, let me put this example of uh, Spotify. No, most uh, people listen to, to music using uh, very sophisticated um, uh, tools uh, like uh, Spotify. But um, these tools, um, you have an interface like this one, you want to play a song and uh, you can play it and it, it works. But it really uh, brings very little support to understand uh, what is behind this. Um, there is very little metadata around it. There is very uh, little explanations of uh, the artists uh, that uh, played that music. So in fact, uh, nowadays we have much less information about the music we are listening than when we use uh, previous technologies like CDs, even uh, radio, uh, in, a, in a CD, you have a cover, you have an explanation of the piece of music, you have an explanation of, uh, of what is being played, and uh, it helps you try to understand that. And so in that sense, uh, I believe we have going backwards. We have uh, really uh, lost uh, quite a bit of the contextual information that helps us understand a piece of music. Okay, so that's a, that's a big challenge and there is a big opportunity to try to bring uh, technologies that could uh, try to uh, improve that. In com music, um, one of the major things that we did was to um, uh, put together uh, data sets, corpora, um, and organize our uh, music collections. And this is, uh, for example, um, the, the, an interface of, uh, well, of Music Brains, uh, which is a, a, a framework that allows to uh, organize metadata of recordings. And for example, this is the, the same CD and the same song that uh, I was showing in Spotify. Uh, that's uh, from... Um, a very well recognized uh, Turkish uh, musician, uh, Tamburi Semil Bey. And uh, there is quite a lot of information about this CD uh, and about the, the, the particular track, uh, this uh, second track, and about the, who is playing, what instruments are playing, uh, where this comes from, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, this is all information that is completely publicly available. Uh, in Music Brains that can be accessed uh, through an API and that we very much, uh, well, um, contributed to. So we had a, a good collaboration with Music Brains to make that happen and to adapt it to the specific music traditions that we're working on. And then from um, uh, the interface that we de uh, develop, which is uh, the Dunia, and let me go to that. So this was a very, uh, uh, initial prototype of trying to uh, develop an interface that would allow to visualize certain things of uh, a particular music. 
So we work on pitch analysis. So when so when you hear the the song, you see the the pitch track uh, going uh, um, up and down. Uh, there is a pitch histogram on the on the right where you can see the main pitches being uh, being played. Where uh, there is the tonic, uh, the A4, which is the the tonic uh, of the song, etc. There is uh, other information. If there is score, the score would have been shown here. And, and then there is this uh, time evolution CE, which in Turkish music is, a, is a, uh, an important concept of uh, musical structure, uh, et cetera. Let me, let me just play this. I mean, it's not, uh, I, I'm not claiming that this is the solution, far from that. I'm just uh, uh, trying to uh, show what we did and that of course is far still from uh, what we would like. So let me uh, play this. Hope you hear that. So this is a, a Turkish uh, tune uh, played with uh, an instrument called Kemenche. And it starts with an improvisatory uh, fragment. And we can see the, the notes that are being played and it stays uh, very much in the on the dominant degree, which is in fact the Husseini pitch, which is uh, uh, the the name of the note that this uh, this makam uh, uh, has uh, Husseini makam, and so it has this uh, kind of very uh, ornamented type of improvisation, um, and then once uh, the this uh, uh, taksim, which is this uh, initial improvisation, is called finishes, uh, there will be an accompanying instrument coming in that will play it a specific rhythm and now we hear the the the, the accompanying uh, which is a tambour uh, that has a specific rhythm and uh, that uh, um, basically uh, maintains the the rhythm and uh, and then the main song uh, is played and then the 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 Kemenche played by this uh, great musician, Tamburis Emil Bey, uh, basically improvises and, uh, uh, on that. Anyway, so clearly uh, this type of um, interface, uh, that would not be something that we would like to have in, in, uh, in, in something like a Spotify, but you can think, you can try to imagine um, possible uh, visualizations that would help someone to try to understand what I was presenting. No, the idea of, okay, this is uh, this particular makam, it has these speeches, it, uh, it, uh, it evolves within uh, these, uh, these uh, specific pitches and uh, there is uh, these uh, ways of improvising along that. Anyway, but that's clearly, um, is not available and Clearly, we didn't reach a level of technology that would allow to uh, to create uh, really what I would like to see in a in a in a player. At least for me, I mean, uh, well, maybe as a uh, as a as a, mm, a another personal outcome of uh, this uh, Com Music project was that okay, I was very much involved with this music tradition, but it didn't help me to uh, understand uh, very well these music traditions. Uh, I, of course, I, I learned to appreciate them, but uh, far from being able to uh, really understand uh, the, the, the subtle uh, aspects of these uh, music uh, traditions that uh, musicians and uh, local listeners uh, are able to appreciate. Okay, anyway, so, the idea is uh, okay. We 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 can do better. So what uh, what can we do, and what type of research can help us uh, reach uh, that type of goal? And as I mentioned, the first thing is that I want to to uh, talk about uh, uh, a music cognition perspective, uh, and uh, the idea. Okay, um, what is music not in the the let's say the absolute way, but in this music cognition aspect and Music is something we construct, and, and this act of construction uh, results both from uh, some genetic processes common to all humans, 
and contextual factors that are culture and person specific. So music listening uh, requires uh, alert, active, focus, and involved minds. And uh, music uh, listening, uh, you could say that is about pattern detection, about identification, about comparison and evaluating of uh, uh, these, uh, these patterns that uh, we are being presented um, in, in the music. And uh, this reference, uh, it's, a, it's a good book uh, to, to, that uh, talks about uh, this aspect. But, um, but these uh, cognitive uh, processes that, uh, uh, that uh, we, we need and that we have uh, genetically and that we develop um, are, are, are pretty much universal. However, the specific musical facets involved in these cognitive processes are culture and style specific. So the development of the comprehension and appreciation of a particular music tradition um, is very much related to uh, what we call enculturation, you know, which is a, a, a very temporally extended process. So it takes years uh, that uh, transforms our overall cognitive capacities and, and allows a kid to uh, become a, a sort of a, a a person with a with a musicality that is adequate to appreciate and uh, and or make music, okay. And in uh, this has been studied uh, quite a bit, uh, but uh, mainly from a, a Western perspective. Uh, and for example, this uh, book by uh, by Krum Hansel um, uh, talks about the 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 features that allows uh, us. Uh, the, the features that are related to pitch, uh, and especially to pitch uh, patterns in uh, classical music that allow us to uh, make sense of, uh, of a piece of music. And so he, uh, he, uh, she develops uh, some experiments and uh, she concludes that, well, there is uh, concepts like uh, pitch, chroma, tonality, uh, as opposed to a tonality, key distance, uh, the idea of modulations in, uh, in uh, Western music, the uh, concepts of interval direction and size, uh, concepts of melodic contour, concepts of uh, accent and stress, uh, the idea of transposition. So, so she does a, a quite a, a thorough study of uh, what are the, the pitch uh, aspects that uh, make uh, us uh, really uh, understand the pitch relationships and uh, the, of, a, of a Western piece of music. And, and that's, uh, that's good, but I couldn't find uh, clearly much on, uh, on other music traditions and, uh, and pitch has been the main uh, focus on a lot of this work. And I guess also it's uh, maybe the main uh, feature to, to be studied. Also, another very important thing and trying to understand uh, this idea of how we, we, we develop this musicality is uh, this idea of embodiment uh, and the idea that uh, mimetic comprehension plays an essential role in music listening. And, and these, uh, these uh, references here uh, talk about that. So uh, what is uh, conceptualized uh, by us is not simply musical sounds, but musical actions and listeners act as a co-performers processing uh, the incoming stimulus as mimetic motor imaginary, uh, imagery. Uh, so musical comprehension requires the internal, internalization of the rules of a particular musical culture, and thus the enjoyment of a music from outside one's culture carries additional cognitive cost. So the idea is that, okay, uh, we can, uh, we can, uh, develop uh, these uh, the, these uh, capacities and uh, inter uh, in internalize some of uh, of these uh, uh, of these rules, but it requires uh, more than what would be required in a, in a kid. And uh, this uh, cognitive process of, of music enculturation uh, take place early in life. And uh, this, uh, this uh, last uh, reference by Morrison and uh, Demarest, uh, they perform some, uh, some uh, experiments on, uh, on showing uh, these that uh, 
kids are clearly uh, uh, um, has a, a stronger um, capacity to to uh, learn and, uh, a particular uh, music uh, uh, and the musical abilities. But uh, but the the thing I want to to um, to conclude out of this is that this idea of embodiment, this idea that music is not just sound, that the, uh, music is something that requires motor uh, uh, motor involvement, that when we listen, we are uh, basically co-performers. It's not just a passive type of activity. And uh, therefore, to develop uh, uh, even music listening abilities or music appreciation abilities, they require to uh, develop this uh, mimetic uh, comprehension, these uh, embodiment uh, uh, characteristics. Okay, and then uh, the final thing about the music cognition, uh, and this is uh, from uh, Pierce and uh, on this uh, article that uh, he uh, hypothesizes uh, the, the idea, what is this musical enculturation depending on? What does it uh, require for someone to really uh, uh, develop this uh, musicality? And um, he basically claims that uh, there is a statistical learning involved in it. Uh, in which uh, listeners acquire internal cognitive models of statistical regularities present in the music, um, in the music and, and to, to what they are exposed. So we develop kind of a, a statistical model of uh, the, what is going on. And then secondly, we basically have um, a probabilistic prediction based on uh, what we have learned of these models and enable uh, listeners to organize and process their mental representations of music. So we constantly are confronting our models with uh, uh, what we listen and with the predictions that we are making of what uh, we, uh, we had uh, heard before. And it's in this uh, kind of dialogue that uh, allows us to uh, uh, make sense of a music tradition. Anyway, so there is, uh, there is quite a bit of, uh, of research that uh, I think is quite useful and quite uh, uh, relevant for what uh, we are uh, talking about. Of course, uh, there is still a lot of work to do, but uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting. I am not uh, uh, um, someone doing much research in music cognition, but it's some research that can be used in a computational uh, type of uh, of research, the one that we are more focusing on and that we should really pay attention to because it gives us uh, quite a lot of insight on many things. Okay, let, let's, uh, let me go to the computational musicology dimension and, and view on musicality. And, uh, and again, this is uh, very much uh, outcomes of uh, the, the research we did in the, in the Com Music project. And, um, and this idea of corpus-based research. Uh, so in computational musicology, um, the typical type of work is uh, we start from data and we try to uh, understand uh, this data and trying to understand the music that this data reflects. So uh, the idea of corpus-based research is, uh, is at the core of it. In uh, the idea that we need to gather uh, data, but it's not enough with gathering data. From data, there is no way that we can uh, just uh, make sense of a music tradition or uh, some musical concepts unless we organize this data properly and we put a lot of attention on how we organize and, uh, and, and, and for what, and so we pay attention to that. So we need to build corpora uh, that uh, can reflect uh, the, the musical phenomena or music tradition or musical style that we, we are uh, focusing on. And we also need the data sets uh, which are specifically uh, uh, made for uh, analyzing particular aspects and that we can evaluate our algorithms in a way that uh, can uh, can be uh, tested and uh, demonstrated that they work. No? So these are corpora and data sets are two of the fundamental elements for successful computational musicology research. Okay, And if we go specifically to the, the, the idea of corpora and data sets, 
Well, uh, uh, we can uh, we, we could say that uh, a corpus, a research corpus, uh, is uh, a collection of data that aims to reflect a musical repertoire. In, in, in this, in our particular type of research, I mean, of course, it could aim to something else, but in our uh, type of work, the idea: okay, we have uh, um, Carnatic music, so we want to build uh, a corpus uh, that. Uh, can be used to study that music tradition. Uh, and we have to make sure that uh, these uh, concepts here, so that uh, the purpose is clear, what do we want to study? We have to make sure that the coverage is adequate, that is, uh, uh, is uh, complete, the data is, uh, is really uh, is, uh, um, complete in all the, the fields, in all the, the types of dimensions that we want to work, that the quality of the data, of course, is good enough. And also very importantly in research is that it can, can be reused, that other researchers can, can have access to that, can reproduce our experiments uh, so that we can uh, uh, build uh, incrementally uh, on top of uh, prior uh, work. Okay, so the research corpus has to um, has to be very well thought of, and the data sets also. The test data sets would be parts of corpora. Sometimes we use other type of data to, to complement these data sets, but uh, these uh, would be uh, subsets of data to study particular problems, to study some melodic uh, uh, characteristics, to study some rhythmic characteristics, to study some uh, some timbre, uh, whatever, some instruments, some artists, etc. And then we need to build these data sets. And that's what we basically did in uh, in Com Music. And uh, you can uh, you can uh, look at the website, and uh, you can uh, get quite a lot of data. Of course, we are not covering everything. Of course, our corpus could be much better, but uh, it's a good starting point to study uh, the different music traditions that uh, we work on, including Hindustani and Carnatic music. Okay, so. Um, uh, again, we have done a lot of work on these topics and we are continuing. And let, let me just now present some of the things that uh, we are uh, doing now. And in fact, some of the things that are being presented at FRSM. So uh, this uh, afternoon, uh, there will be uh, a presentation by Jyoti Narang um, that uh, she uh, works on, uh, on the idea of dynamics. Uh, she mainly works on uh, dynamics of... Uh, uh, let's say Western pop music, but in this particular paper, uh, she tried to apply those same concepts to uh, Hindustani music, vocal Hindustani music. So you will uh, you will hear uh, her initial uh, attempts of trying to um, uh, apply the, the the loudness curves that she has been working on, trying to. Uh, compute them in a way that could be converted to uh, symbolic uh, dynamic uh, marking. So that's something that, uh, that's how you would like to describe a piece of music uh, at the level of dynamics with some symbolic representation of the dynamics. And that would allow you to compare uh, two renderings of a particular song. So these are two renderings of uh, one a uh, particular song and a cover song. So this, uh, bo the bottom one would be the reference song and the top would be someone trying to imitate that. So you can compare these two songs and you can uh, 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 discuss whether, of course, they could deviate for some expressive uh, purposes or they could try to imitate and how well they imitate. So anyway, so th this is uh, one particular music feature. There are many of them that are uh, important if we want to analyze uh, a particular repertoire, a particular piece of music, and compare with other renderings, with other versions of the same song, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, so this uh, afternoon, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, follow this uh, talk by uh, Jyoti. Um, another talk that we, we had uh, yesterday uh, was uh, by Janice Plasha and, uh, and Thomas uh, Nuttall, and um, in which uh, they presented uh, some work, uh, different things uh, related to what we are doing, uh, continuing the work of, of Com Music for Carnatic Music. 
And uh, one of the uh, um, research that we had uh, been doing in music, and there's still a lot left to be done, is uh, related to uh, uh, motivic analysis, to automatic um, uh, identification of uh, different, uh, different uh, let's say, uh, uh, repetitions of a particular motive. And that's uh, clearly in the case of Carnatic music, also in Hindustani, that's a very challenging thing because uh, there is a lot of changes that the performer does to a motive. Uh, and when they uh, repeat that motive can uh, go through many different uh, changes. So in this particular paper, and we have done different approximations through the years, it uh, uses this, uh, this idea of a matrix profile uh, to uh, take a pitch track and identify uh, where each pitch track is present throughout a particular song. And uh, we go through different types of processes, trying to uh, well get rid of things that regions that might not be relevant to compare with. And so this is uh, the ideal outcome. And we're getting some, starting to get some uh, good results in which out of a query uh, motif, uh, it returns uh, quite a number of motifs and not, and the important thing is not, not just identical motifs because that basically there are none, but motifs that uh, are variations of these motifs and that have some interesting um, relationship with the, the original one. Then again, this is a way for for people, for, uh, for musicologists, for, uh, musicians to 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 uh, visualize that and try to understand what uh, these relationships are so anyway so yesterday it was presented and we will we will uh, publish the paper and you will be able to see uh, some of those results and well there is already a paper on this that you can uh, you can find okay so these are just a very few uh, uh, highlights on uh, different computational musicology uh, type of task uh, again, there are many more that are, are possible and many more that we have done that, uh, again, they aim to try to study um, either the audio. We have also done work on symbolic data on scores. Uh, we have done work on quite a number of the dimensions that, uh, that uh, um, these uh, different music traditions uh, uh, have and uh, that may be interesting, but of course it's a, uh, it's, uh, very challenging uh, type of task and there is a lot of work uh, left to be done but again related to musicality what this has to do with musicality is the idea that if we have these and we have good enough techniques for doing that then interfaces for a listener uh, can be developed so that uh, you can help the listener appreciate these uh, uh, relationships these patterns um, and, um, and try to understand better what the musician is doing, uh, what a composition uh, is organized as. Okay? So let's, let me go to the last, um, last topic I want to cover, which is the, the idea of music education. So the more pragmatic type of thing. Okay, so ideally, if we understand the music uh, cognition aspect, if we uh, have uh, technologies, from uh, computational musicology that allows us to uh, analyze the music and, and get uh, some meaningful patterns. Um, how do we use all that in, uh, in music education? Okay, so if we uh, look at the music education field, uh, again, it uh, has a long tradition uh, and uh, there are uh, different ways that uh, music is uh, is, uh, is educated and uh, musicality is uh, taught. Um, and typically uh, music education, the goal of it is to train people in different musical abilities. And for example, this reference here goes through uh, uh, in Western music, uh, a very, uh, very systematized type of listing of all the abilities that are commonly um, uh, taught and tested in exams, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in music, uh, in, in formal music education. And, uh, and that's, um, 
uh, and these uh, these abilities uh, well they are of many categories and again there are some that are um, uh, more focused on um, musicianship which is the, the idea of making music and abilities that are more related to appreciate and comprehend music and we, we could use the term uh, listenership listenership the the ability is to appreciate and to discriminate to understand some music anyway so there is a, a lot in here there has been a lot of methodologies through the years and through the centuries of how to go about that and uh, and uh, there has been some evaluation of those and clearly uh, there is a, a, a lot of very good work but of course is, is based on very lengthy, uh, time-consuming uh, type of um, uh, uh, teaching uh, uh, processes and, and learning processes. And ideally, we would like, if we can help that and, uh, and speed up that or improve that in some way or another. Um, and uh, the, the idea of listenership, which is the one that I wanted to, to focus on, um, is, uh, is uh, again, is this ability to be able to uh, discriminate sounds, uh, to discriminate musical patterns, uh, to understand the relationship between patterns, and, and therefore uh, to, to uh, convert an auditory experience into uh, some uh, uh, other experience uh, that uh, relates uh, as with other uh, uh, realities and other cultural phenomena. You know? So we want to convert the auditory experience into really uh, cognitive and cultural uh, experience. Um, and uh, that's ideally what we would like to, to, to train, to develop. And in this area, there is a, a, a very active field, uh, mainly, again, coming from music cognition, but that is the idea of perceptual learning. And uh, perceptual learning, and this is uh, one of the books, there is a lot of literature on perceptual learning. And uh, the, the, this is a field that... Uh, basically tries to study the permanent changes in cortical structure uh, caused by external stimuli. So the, the idea is that um, in, uh, to, to really uh, um, learn certain things and develop certain uh, cognitive abilities, they require really have some uh, permanent changes in our uh, cortical structure. And, and that's not... Uh, uh, easy. That's not something that you can just uh, do by studying uh, a book and, and learning to do that. That requires uh, a lot of practical uh, uh, development, and um, and so um, and this perceptual learning uh, basically uh, they 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 claim that uh, we um, uh, we develop these uh, these uh, or. or or develop these changes or develop these, uh, these uh, capacities by increasing the attention paid to perceptual uh, dimensions uh, and features that are important. So that would be the, the so you, you're listening, you pay attention, and you, uh, you have these task relevant features. And by paying attention to those, you uh, make uh, these uh, these uh, changes in your uh, in your brain, and at the same time, you basically decrease attention to irrelevant features. So uh, you uh, are uh, put in a situation that try to uh, not uh, pay attention to the features that uh, might not be uh, relevant for that particular task. And so the claim is that with this type of uh, um, idea and with this type of approach and you can develop practical implementations of these you can try to speed up the process of develop some cognitive abilities uh, some musical abilities in particular okay so that's there has been very few experiments uh, for music there has been quite a lot in the image uh, domain on, on music to try to uh, let's say learn a particular task by uh, preparing a set of experiments. Of course, this is not something that you can do in just uh, a few hours. That, again, takes uh, time. But the idea is that you can speed up the process of learning some uh, characteristic. 
Okay, and uh, then um, we are uh, finishing here. And um, the last uh, one uh, I want to talk about music education is the, this idea, okay, uh, we want to build tools. We want to build uh, specific tools that can help with that. And uh, yesterday uh, we had another uh, uh, presentation from my group. So basically we, ha we have had uh, three presentations in, uh, in the FRSM. And um, one was uh, this by uh, Caro, uh, repeto, uh, Rafael, um, who presented um, uh, a work that we have done in the last few years uh, within a project called Musical Bridges, in which uh, we took the data from uh, Com Music, so the, the corpora and the data sets of Com Music, and all the annotations and, uh, and uh, the, the, the audios that we had, to try to put together um, interfaces to help educate people on particular tasks relevant of a particular music. And the ones he presented was on Indian music, uh, things that he, uh, he developed, trying to um, help on uh, Tala recognition, for example, and ways to visualize that as, to, as we, uh, we hear a piece of music, uh, things related with raga uh, identification and uh, ways to visualize the raga and as, as, uh, as the, the Tala goes uh, around. So anyway, the, the idea is to try to, there is, there is some ga gamification to it so that you can play around with the, some of these uh, exercises, uh, but at the same time, you can uh, just listen to a piece of music while visualizing some of these things, hopefully with this idea that these uh, visualizations uh, and uh, many, some of these have been manually uh, corrected, the annotations, some are automatically uh, analyzed, but uh, the idea is, is more of a proof of concept to, uh, to try to see if uh, this type of uh, interfaces, this type of technologies can help us on very important tasks to appreciate, in this case, Indian music, like the recognition of the Tala, the recognition of the, of the Raga, and, uh, and the ways that a uh, performer uh, improvises and, uh, and, uh, and sings a particular Raga. Okay, so let me uh, uh, just uh, conclude with some uh, final thoughts. And um, well, I had uh, two types of final thoughts. One is, is to basically summarize uh, these, uh, the, the concepts that I have uh, gone through. And um, the, the first uh, is uh, this uh, basic assumption that uh, music is uh, something that humans construct. And uh, that is based on two factors, uh, genetic processes common to all humans. And in that sense, these are abilities uh, that, uh, well, might be some people are more um, capable of acquiring certain musical uh, uh, abilities, but in general, everyone has, uh, we, we, we have this, uh, uh, this musicality that is innate uh, and in fact, that's one of the things that uh, differentiate us from uh, other animals, uh, even though there is uh, now quite a bit of research to, to, to try to study the musicality of uh, some animals and, and, and see how far we can, we can go with that. But uh, the, the important uh, thing of music and the one that we, we basically we can control is the, these contextual factors, uh, these contextual factors that uh, are cultural and person specific, uh, that uh, of course uh, are developed uh, through uh, our lives, but that we can modulate and that uh, we can uh, help someone uh, develop uh, this uh, musicality in a particular way. Then the, the other uh, um, basic premise that uh, I started with uh, is this idea that uh, while we listen to a piece of music, uh, listeners uh, mainly try to identify melodic and rhythmic patterns and their connections. And, and by doing that, uh, basically this defines the, the ability of people to, uh, to the, their skill of uh, music listening and their skill to be able to appreciate uh, what uh, a piece of music what uh, a performer is doing. And uh, this uh, ability is something uh, that uh, can be trained and that is clearly very much 
cultural and style specific. And that's uh, the one that we, we want to uh, study and we want to develop tools that can help in that process. And then finally, and that's something good uh, for people like me, uh, that uh, when you're an adult, uh, a typical claim uh, is, okay, many of these things uh, you have to learn when you're a kid, uh, forget it, you're never going to be able to recognize ragas, I, I still am incapable to recognize ragas, but there is some hope. Uh, that uh, the, the idea is that uh, adults can be trained to comprehend, appreciate music traditions to which they were not exposed when growing up, and there is some experimental um, uh, uh, thing, uh, experimental results that uh, uh, validate that. Anyway, and then just uh, to final thing, um, this uh, presentation was more of uh, identifying interesting things to work on than showing uh, results that I am very happy with. You know? So the idea is that uh, I think uh, uh, the, the idea of developing mus musicality is a, is a very challenging task uh, that uh, definitely uh, we can try to, uh, to impact and we can try to develop uh, ways to improve that. And, uh, through these three different disciplines, and of course there might be other disciplines that could also play an important role, but uh, I focused on these three disciplines. Each of them uh, has a lot of work uh, that still needs to be done and that could help us very much. Um, in the area of music cognition, um, we definitely have to still uh, understand well, characterize, model, and evaluate the musical facets responsible for musical comprehension. And, and again, uh, these are things are, some are universal, and this mainly music cognition has focus on universal type of comprehension, but uh, there is lately uh, quite a bit of interest in uh, cultural specific, style specific uh, musical comprehension and try to understand this. From a computational musicology point of view, again, there is a lot of work to be done uh, because uh, our technologies are uh, not good enough for capturing all these uh, subtle uh, musical aspects that uh, we perceive and that are important for a particular music. So we need to discover features in music corpora that characterize a specific music styles and um, that are relevant um, for this uh, type of uh, understanding uh, that musical style. And finally, and uh, equally important, okay, we, we definitely have need to develop uh, tools. And uh, in, in my group, we have done quite a number of things. And in fact, we, uh, we have created uh, interfaces and uh, things for that. But there is a lot, a lot to be done to develop uh, not just the tool, but the whole training method methodology. No, I mean, it's not by a tool, it's not enough. You definitely need to develop a, a complete methodology that can help improve the listening, uh, listening abilities uh, to, uh, for people. And uh, again, there is a lot of work lately uh, being done on these, uh, especially for traditional musicality, for learning music, not so much for uh, let's, what I call listenership but uh, there is a surge of applications of mobile apps and, uh, and things like that, uh, especially uh, with the pandemic to, to try to have uh, online education for that. So anyway, but there is a lot of interesting research to be done and that we hope in, uh, in my group, but I hope uh, also uh, many other researchers uh, will get involved so that uh, we can advance in this idea of uh, helping people become more musical. And with that, uh, I finish. Uh, so thank you very much. And um, if uh, I guess there is some time, we can do some questions. So I am done. Thank you very much.